I want to start off our talk today with a little bit about the Swissy, the, Sw the Frank itself, because as much as I personally, and you know, personal feelings really have no place in trading, but at some point we need to make a decision about what we think about the fundamentals that are coming down, how realistic they are. You know, while there still continues to be some legs, there's still a lot of legs on this on this pair as far as people expecting this peg. I've always felt this this peg is just absolutely unrealistic. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to start willy-nilly shorting the Swissy without any kind of structure to when and how I want to be bearish on the pair. And I am bearish on the pair. So uh, the question has popped up. Do I think it's reversal time for the Swissy? I do. I absolutely do. And let me show you the setup that I am considering and also how you have to temper this setup with with some of the price action that's going on right now. So you all know that I scan the markets across the 5, 15, 30, 60, 2, 40 daily. The 5 is purely an intraday trading, very short-term approach. The 15 and 30 are my short-term time frames where I will consider price movement in these situations that are counter trends. So if anybody out there was or continues to be a frank bull, which is fine because short term, you have absolutely, you frank bulls out there have absolutely been justified. But my my approach starts with the fact that the daily time frame is very much in a markdown trend. In fact, if you take a look at how long we've been trading down, pretty much since the end of January, and how few blue neutral grab candles, you know, just a single, maybe one or two green bearish, uh, I'm sorry, uh, bullish grab candles, but for the most part, this is dominated heavily by red grab candles that are signifying the bearish sentiment, the bearish momentum, and then of course the 34 EMA wave confirms a bearish trend. Okay, so counter trend then takes on what? A meaning of being bullish or looking for buys, right? So 15 and 30 are where I'll limit those counter trend trades. And I actually want to see the 15 and 30 start to do what I call rollover. Okay, I want to see that the uptrend is beginning to lose that nice steep 12 to 2 o'clock angle and start to get more shallow. I want to see that my green grab candles that have dominated the 15 and the 30 minute time frame, as you can see here, are starting to either go neutral or even red as they are here on the 15 minute time frame. So I want to see that rolling over process on the, on the short term time frames, the 15 the 30, because that will at least confirm that we're starting to see some shift in the sentiment. I'm not going to jump and say we're bearish, but we're seeing a shift in the bullish sentiment. Now, consider that ever since the Swissies really taken off, in this case the dollar Swissie we're looking at right here, you can see the dominant trend, you can see the dominant sentiment and momentum, and this is the first time, actually on the 15 minute chart, it's probably the second time, second or yeah, second time, that we've gone red, on the 15 minute time frame. This is the first time on the 30 since we've had this dramatic rally in the dollar Swissy that we've really gone blue for any length of time. In other words, gone neutral. Now with this more neutral with this more neutral stance now, I can start to say to myself, well, it's the first significant shift on the 30 minute and it's the second significant shift on the 15 my two short term time frames that are indicating that maybe the bullishness is starting to exhaust that the buyers aren't willing to push up to higher highs they're not willing to buy at that new high they're not willing to hit you know they're not willing to hit up to uh, in a willingness to continue that that higher high mentality okay so now 
I jump back on over to my daily time frame. And the reason I'm looking at the daily right now is for some time, let me blow this chart up, for some time I've been looking at this rather somewhat ugly falling wedge. I won't say this is the prettiest falling wedge I've ever seen in my life. In fact, at the time it actually triggered, it helped trigger the, the breakdown as you can see right here. So the breakdown actually triggered here. I won't say it's not a, I won't say it's a bad falling wedge. Don't don't uh, take my description as, as to signify it's a bad falling wedge. It just uh maybe I'm being too harsh. I could be. You know, what do I need? Let's talk about what we need for a falling wedge before I start passing my pre-morning coffee judgment as I often do. So, a falling wedge needs a downtrend. Preferably one that's defined by a 4 to 6 o'clock wave angle, 34 EMA wave angle, and one that's dominated by the red grab candles. We do have that, and it broke down. This is a trend following momentum short sell, rather than shorting off the resistance of the pattern. Okay? Now, I talked about the breakdown. Okay? So, when you look at where and how we broke down right through here boom that was your breakdown really nice follow through what about now okay so breakdown yes in terms of the momentum now I think we're really looking at one of two things now a lot of people might see this pierce here and automatically think oh this is time to get long I'm not going to all of a sudden jump in on, number one, a very significant trend shifting all that easy. Okay, at best, if I'm, if I'm a bull, at best, I'm thinking neutral. And, I don't, and I'm actually not thinking neutral at all. In fact, if anything, I'm looking at this test of the downtrend line of the falling wedge and don't forget this is simply just a downtrend line it's part of this pattern that we'll call the falling wedge but it's just a downtrend line right and this test of the downtrend line has really two levels to watch the downtrend line itself and the 34 EMA wave now in a situation like this where I can see the short-term time frames are losing their losing their bullish momentum we looked at the 15 looked at the 30 And this is the Euro Swissy. Hang on, let me, let me jump. Uh, we're looking at the Euro Swissy right now. Let me jump on over to the dollar, dollar Swissy. I should talk about the Euro Swissy as well. Okay, so as I take a look at this downtrend, okay, we're back on the dollar Swissy here. Same story, by the way. Okay, I was looking at both this morning. Same story. The, the charts look almost identical, don't they? It's the same setup. Okay, so sorry for any confusion. We're looking at the dollar Swissy and the Euro Swissy. And it's the same story because what's happening is the franc is starting to pull back. Now, do I think it's reversal time? Well, I don't want to use the word reversal without putting that into the proper context. Do I think the downtrend that preceded this, this dramatic correction is going to resume? In other words, here's the Euro Swissy we've corrected. I wouldn't call it what's happened right now a reversal. I know that might sound kind of odd, but when I'm going to make grand opinions, these big wide sweeping opinions about a pair, it's going to be based upon what I feel is the most psychologically relevant time frame, and that's the daily chart. So, do I think that we've corrected the trend in a very dramatic way? Yes. Do I think we might have even transitioned the trend into possibly some sort of sideways market movement. That's also definitely arguable. Do I think we've reversed the trend? I do not. Okay, I absolutely do not. All right, there's your downtrend line from the falling wedge on the Euro Swissy. We pierced it, yes. We haven't established any support above it. And again, we're, we're, we've made a very significant correction. I mean, we made a correction uh, deeper than the golden mean on the Euro Swissy. Let's jump on over to the dollar Swissy. 
So again, you see the chart pattern. Now this chart pattern isn't as clear cut as that that uh, Euro Swissy one. There we go. We've we've done a little bit more in terms of testing that downtrend, and, and partly the reason for that has been uh, in this case, you know, we have that relationship of the Euro versus the Swissy, and then we have this relationship of the 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 dollar versus the Swissy. Uh, the dollar today is having a very uh, hard time. We're we're moving down lower sharply on the US dollar, but then you gotta step back and look at the overall range on the dollar. And that's something that I can show you here. Let's take a look at that dollar because I do want to show you the dollar index quickly here. Alright, so here's a dollar right there. And what I'm talking about is this move lower right there. So that's when I talk about the dollar having a hard time today. That's what I'm referring to. But what I want you to really notice is has the dollar gone anywhere in about four months? May, June, July, here we are halfway through August. Have we gone anywhere? Call it three and a half months. No, we have not gone anywhere. There's no acceleration of the dollar's downtrend. There's certainly no reversal of the dollar's downtrend. This is akin to a distribution market that is typically seen at the top of an uptrend. But I do believe there's justification for calling this distribution at the bottom of the downtrend in terms of the characteristics of a wide, volatile, sideways range. Okay? So we can't get, we can't omit the dollar from this conversation. So here is the dollar Swissy. You know, again, it's the same type of thinking that I'm looking at. Uh, it's going to be reliance on the franc starting to lose footing here. Now, you can't ignore the fundamental backdrop of this entire move on the franc, which is this ridiculous notion of a peg. Yes, I'm expressing a bias here, but this ridiculous notion of a peg. I don't think it's realistic, but look, I, I kind of I posted a an update over the weekend that basically said. Uh, the SNB is showing the BOJ how you do it. In other words, this is a lot of saber rattling. This is a lot of continued talk about something I think the SNB has no intention of doing. Although, I have to be prepared for the fact that they might take other action. I think this type of talk, though, has really, really set into traders and investors' minds just how serious the SNB is. They just went to a very dramatic, very potentially impactful form of, of, of currency weakening rather than selling a bunch of franc or rather than doing what they did before which was basically uh, playing around with their interest rates they went full throttle and said we're gonna peg the euro again I think that's absolutely unrealistic I think people feel it's unrealistic but the longer the, the SMB continues to talk about this continues to perpetuate the headline they'll perpetuate the fear that they might actually do it. They might actually be crazy enough to do it. And of course, price action must react to that. So how do I recognize when traders are saying, all right, enough pulling our, pulling our leg. If you're going to do it, do it. Okay? I think that's what we're seeing here. Okay, this is the dollar swissy. I think, again, that's what we're seeing here. That traders are like, all right, you, you basically pulled our leg for a couple sessions here. We've corrected the franc against the dollar. We've corrected the franc against the euro considerably because you have talked a good game. Now what you're going to do? Okay? And I think this is a what you're going to do now exhaustion. Into this what you're going to do now exhaustion, especially in the euro swissy we could look at a potential short sell at this, uh, at really that downtrend line resistance. And for those of you that are thinking, well, you know, I know how the SNB's been. You know, what keeps them from jumping out with another headline? What keeps them from now saying, we're going to uh, go ahead and put a, uh, a tax, we're going to impose a tax on foreign income, uh, foreign inflows? That would certainly 
prevent further strengthening of the Swiss, at least in part, and it could even cause some outflows. And what if they come out and say that? That we're not going to pay, but we're going to do this other thing. Impose a tax on foreign, foreign, you know, foreign uh, franc holdings. So for those of you that are saying, well, I really want to see that there's enough bearish momentum, what you could do instead is, is go ahead and trade to the downside. Again, if you're a bear, trade to the downside by waiting for prices to, to slash back down through 1200, 1.1200, and the golden mean, the 618 golden mean. That's certainly one way to do it. Near term, you, you go in a short term time frame. Heck, go in a five minute time frame. You know, it doesn't have to be a huge longer term type entry. You know, it could be shorter term saying, you know what, I, I can see that the, the, the trend may be slowing. And, and it's not slowing as quickly on the Euro Swissy as it is the dollar Swissy intraday. You know, maybe I'm going to go ahead and take a, take a reversal trade on this pair. Wait for prices to dip through the 34 period EMA low accompanied with, and the indicator that I prefer to confirm this trade with is a CCI 20 period triggering below 100 and maybe, and that's exactly what we're getting right now by the way. So maybe I'll go ahead and take advantage of this by taking this kind of trade. This is, this is what I call a wave reversal or a wave CCI. We, we were just, trend must be uh, what precedes the reversal. Okay, you can definitely see the shift in sentiment. Going to a red grab candle confirms what I believe to be the shift in momentum. And that's actually a, a, a reversal. It's a trend following reversal because the overall trend I still believe is down. But there's a good argument for a little bit of neutrality being injected in there. I'm not a bull on the Swissy at all. I know it sounds funny after what amounts to a rally that began at 7070 and took us up to 8,000. Okay, a 930 pip rally on the dollar Swissy. You know, I know it might, might sound silly, but again, that's just how strong the downturn has been that nearly a thousand pips does little more than create a very deep correction. So, yes, intraday, I think the signs are there for reversal on the Swissy. End of day, I think there's signs for exhaustion. And, and that's how I'm trading not just the dollar Swissy, but the euro Swissy. Okay, and I hope you saw the subtle differences between the two in terms of their intraday exhaustion. Okay, we we not quite seen the same kind of intraday exhaustion on the Euro Swissy. Okay, as we are on the dollar Swissy. But that daily time frame with that overlay of the chart pattern is really giving us potentially a, a trigger for a 1200 breakdown on the Euro Swissy and a golden mean breakdown. Okay. All right. So that is our discussion for today. Uh, I just want to quickly mention that the tools that I was using for today's presentation are available on the IBFX platform. It was the power stats right here, the price movement range. We didn't really talk much about that, but this is a very interesting price and time based support and resistance tool. And then of course I did have the auto chartist automated price, uh, automated uh, chart pattern running on there. And of course my my grab tools, my 34 EMA and my and my grab candles. Okay. So whether you're live or demo on the IBFX4 platform, they are included on the install. Okay, they're all in the list there, so you can just drag and drop them right onto your chart, whether it be the power stats, Fibonacci patterns, chart patterns, or my grab candles and my 34 EMA wave, demo or live, you can overlay them on your chart through the platform. So just wanted to make sure you knew what to access the tools that I'm using for this and, and all of my presentations. Thank you as always for joining me. I'm Rocky Horner. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you in our next presentation.